We're back, I'm very pleased to say, joined by Ambassador Francis Rooney. We have been privileged to have him on from time to time since he left his appointed position as the U.S. Ambassador to the Holy See, uh, often in connection with his writings about the role of the Holy See these days, the Catholic Church, uh, notably his marvelous book, The Global Vatican an inside look at the Catholic Church world politics and the extraordinary relationship between the United States and the Holy See. Um, We were also moved to try to reconnect with him uh, in connection with a very important piece that he wrote recently at The Hill newspaper uh, concerning the questions that are vexing all of us, I think, of ISIS and uh, the phenomenon of Islamic extremism and the long war. Mr. Ambassador, welcome back. It's good to have you with us, sir. Thank you for having me back. On. Thank you. I want to talk with you about a couple of things, uh, but maybe we could start with um, a proposition that you reminded us of uh, in this piece in the Hill newspaper, uh, namely the way George W. Bush characterized uh, back in 2001 what we were confronting. And he put it, quote, we are a country awakened to danger and called to defend freedom against, as you put it, an onslaught by terrorists practicing, quote, a fringe form of Islamic extremism, unquote. Now, you're a serious student of these matters. Um, Is, in your judgment, that a correct characterization of the, the sort of nature of jihad and the role that it plays in authoritative Islam, not not simply more extreme versions of it. Well, I think it was perhaps more of a fringe movement in 2001 as we were first aware of the situation that it may appear to be now with the proliferation of al-Qaeda cells and ISIS hegemonic activity in many places of the world. But at the end of the day, we've got to hope that there is a bulwark of secular Muslims that will not be radicalized and want to practice their religion like everybody else wants to and not apply Sharia law and get with the program of living in the 21st century. If not, we're going to have a real long struggle taking them all out. Well, a long war indeed. I think you're right that we should hope for that, and we certainly should be adopting and following policies that are conducive to it. And and I guess this is one of the things that I, I wonder if you've been as concerned about as I, that the policies that we're pursuing, notably embracing, as the Obama administration has done, the Muslim Brotherhood and other groups like it, uh, that we may, to say nothing of Iran, for crying out loud, we may actually be working very much at cross-purposes with that hope and uh, in sort of cultivating the notion that uh, actually the Islamists within the Muslim community are the strong horse, as Bin Laden used to say. Well, that's, that's, another, that's part of why I wrote the article. I'm just kind of, kind of sick to see six years of not referring to this terror as religiously inspired Islamic Muslim or anything. That ridiculous phrase, an overseas contingency operation, instead of considering this thing the kind of war on the Western world that it is, is, is a little bit disheartening to me. So I wrote the article to try to say, maybe people should think about what are we facing here and the level of the threat that these people pose to the modern world. Well, I, I'm so heartened by your clarity on this point. And one of the reasons why it's particularly relevant, of course, is that just last weekend we saw people who were warning of some of these features, uh, specifically the threat to Western civilization posed by these jihadists, very narrowly averting, uh, you know, a massacre. And I, I just wonder what your thoughts are as a former ambassador to one of the centers of religious life in the world, uh, the Holy See, Ambassador Francis Rooney. You have thoughts as to whether we have really, in the name of political correctness or in the name of uh, freedom of religion or so on, actually allowed serious infringements on another First Amendment freedom, namely freedom of speech. Yeah, I'd like to make three points in that respect. First of all, it's just the unfortunate nature of of humanity that that progressive or liberal people don't seem to want to to respect is that appeasement's never worked. Hiding problems under the rugs never worked. You've got to confront them and have an open and honest debate, and that has to happen concerning Sharia law and Islamic terrorism and all that. And so when we do appease, and it gets a little more insidious when you look at some of these organizations that you've referred to in the past, 
who are helping the Americans figure out how to appease, like CARE and MAF and things like that. You know, the, well, I think we just aid and abet the people that want to destroy freedom and destroy the Western way of life. So that's one point is appeasement doesn't work. The other point is that I think that religions have a role to play, and that we've seen some people speak up recently about that, Admiral Freeman being one, Ambassador and Admiral Freeman, that the religious leaders have a role to play in combating this the same way that like Truman tried to get religions to combat communism. And so far, really, Pope Benedict and Pope Francis have been the only religious leaders to speak up. And it would be real helpful if all religious leaders would speak up and say, the First Amendment protects us all, and it's under attack right now by this radical extremist uh, interpretation of Islam, and that as Pope Benedict said in Regensburg, and Pope Francis just said recently at his trips, the Islamicists need to figure out how to interpret their religion in a way that's consistent with the rest of the world. Well, unfortunately, they seem to be bent on changing the rest of the world as to conform to their interpretation of uh, their faith. And, and this is really the rub, isn't it? I'm, I'm wondering, uh, again, from your experience representing the United States uh, in the Vatican, uh, Ambassador Rooney, but also, of course, as a prominent Catholic in the United States as well, whether you are concerned, as I am, that what we've seen happening as part of this sort of, well, the Brotherhood calls it civilization jihad, the effort to kind of suborn the church by practice they uh, bill as bridge building or interfaith dialogue, um, is is that something that uh, is working against the kind of appeal that you're making for people of faith to stand up against this jihadism, if they are in some ways at least being induced by their interlocutors in these kinds of conversations to silence criticism? I think the interfaith dialogue and reaching out, building cultural bridges like Pope Benedict spoke of, are all fine as long as they're accompanied by the strength of principle as well. But when you don't have the strength of principle, then that becomes the overriding goal, then it becomes interpreted as appeasement and giving in, and that's the problem. You know, I put a quote in the book, I think it's from Ben Franklin, I might be mistaken on that, where he said, people that will choose security over freedom deserve neither. And that's kind of where we are with this stuff. One of the points that you make in uh, in your piece, and again, we're speaking with Ambassador Francis Rooney, who formerly represented us in the Vatican. He's uh, the author of a relatively recent article entitled ISIS, Islamic Extremism and the Long War in the Hill newspaper. You reminded us of the role that the church specifically played, both in the effort that Harry Truman famously made to try to check the ascendancy of communism, the last terrible totalitarian ideology that tried to destroy us, uh, now being you know imitated by these Sharia guys, but also the important role of, of uh, Pope John Paul II in the efforts that uh, he and Margaret Thatcher and most especially Ronald Reagan made to try to check and ultimately defeat Soviet communism. Where are we at the moment, as you see it, with respect to a similar kind of effort to well, I, I think it's quite possible, as George Weigel said, that this Regensburg speech someday down the road, when this thing is all solved somehow, and I've got to feel confident that the Western world will somehow solve it. We're not going to go let them impose 10th century behavior on 8 billion people. But uh, uh, that Regensburg will be seen as a major turning point, kind of like I don't think that Churchill realized what the Iron Curtain speech would do when he gave it. And, and, and uh, as an important milestone about speaking up, frankly and clearly, about the abuse of the use of religion to justify violence, about the inappropriate nature of spreading the word by the sword in the 21st century. And, and then maybe that will lead people to call on some heightened levels of interdiction and uh, containment against these, these uh, wrongdoers. And we've done so far. And that's what I was kind of calling for the article, too. If you look at this, these people as the equivalent of Nazi Germany, or World War II Japan, you wouldn't be letting them fly in and out of our country. It's a very basic common sense proposition. Ambassador Rooney, we have to leave it with that proposition, but I hope you'll come back to us again soon to further discuss uh, all of these points because they really are central to the kind of future that we're going to bequeath to our children and our grandchildren. God bless you, sir, and thank you for your service to our country. Next up, we'll be speaking with Bill Gertz. He'll take us inside the ring straight ahead. 